بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم استغفر الله العظيم استغفر الله العظيم استغفر الله العظيم وأتوب إليه أما بعد Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Ahlan wa sahlan wa marhaban bikum to everyone Welcoming you to another episode of our uh, five part series Where we will be discussing uh, and further understanding With regards to a very important component of our religion Which is none other than our prayers Okay so our prayers is the second pillar of Islam as we all know after the shahadatain ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammadar rasulullah okay believing that um, there is no other god but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is uh, the last messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, so after that the second pillar of Islam is as salah prayer uh, so we have uh, throughout uh, this uh, series, okay, we have discussed many important aspects of salah. We discussed about wudu, okay, we discussed about the arkan, okay, what important uh, or mandatory aspects of the prayer that we have to perform. If not, our salah would be invalid. Uh, would be invalid. Then also we discussed uh, regarding 
praying in congregants and how it is uh, encouraged okay as muslims uh, so that we reap its benefits uh, and we discuss many issues concerning all of uh, these prayers uh, so if you've missed out on that do um, watch the previous episode so that we can uh, keep ourselves in check be better muslims and um, share the love together inshallah okay so for today's episode we will be uh, discussing together the do's and don'ts for salah uh, in general okay what should we do uh, during salah okay and what uh, we should abstain from during prayer uh, i will not prolong this episode okay we will just focus on um, items that i feel are very important and should be emphasized on okay when we perform our prayer and this this is not uh, talking about mandatory or obligatory items such as rukun or wudu okay uh, if not it will be the same episode lah as previous episodes uh, so rather we would talk about maybe ethics okay the sunnah uh, when performing our prayer okay uh, so we proceed with the first do uh, that we should do uh, so the first thing we should do uh, we should ensure we do when performing our salah is to be in our best state uh, be it in terms of our clothing okay wear our best attire um, perfume okay wear minimal or rather sufficient amount of perfume not too much that it attracts the attention of others uh, sufficient enough to notify that okay i'm in my best uh, state and also to cover our awrat properly uh, so like we see okay sometimes people would just um, pray with their swimming tights for example uh, yeah i i pray with something that uh, is not your best clothing uh, for example your t-shirt when you have your juba in your wardrobe you have your baju melayu okay your baju kurung your traditional malay outfit uh, in your wardrobe but then you still choose to wear your t-shirt your jersey uh, your manchester united jersey or liverpool jersey uh, with that sponsor uh, so you still choose to use that uh, particular clothing uh, so is it wrong no it's not wrong you can pray as long as you cover your aura but remember we are standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we are worshipping him uh, so we have to ensure that we are in our best possible state physically uh, first impressions are important no uh, of course they are important uh, say for example let's give a brief analogy uh, we are having our first interview we applied for a job uh, so we applied uh, after applied uh, after we applied for the job uh, then there's the first interview okay then we go to the first interview meeting the uh, general manager meeting your superiors meeting the hr of that company uh, then what happens you come with your t-shirt you come with your shorts you come with your flip-flops what would be their impression of you uh, wouldn't be nice lah even if you have the am- most amazing of skill sets you speak well but then your first impression is like that uh, it wouldn't be nice yeah uh, so as compared to uh, if you go there uh, with your best uh, sh- clothing you see uh, some t- uh, it is highly encouraged for us to go to our first interview with uh, what long sleeve collar with tie belt smart pants and all right uh, so s- why because first impression is important uh, you want to give off a first impression uh, so similar to our prayer even before we do our salah if we come to allah we want to pray then you come with your singlet you come with your three quarter yeah lah you cover your aura but then it is like that uh, is it presentable no uh, so we have to ensure we have to be in our best state uh, physically in terms of our clothing okay wear some perfume put our best clothes the juba or the traditional malay uh, costume okay for example okay uh, this will help okay when we are mentally also psychologically when we are in 
uh, the right and correct clothing, okay, our mind would be set to it to perform our prayer. Okay, so that's the first do. Okay, make sure we are in the best physical state. Uh, that's number one. Okay, number two would be to set your intention before you do your prayer. And this cannot be emphasized enough. So that is the first do with regards to performing salah. Okay, we have to ensure that we are in the best possible physical state. Okay, now we move on to the second do uh, for uh, salah. Uh, so which is we have to set our intention. Uh, this has to be uh, very much emphasized because when we perform our prayer uh, every day, it tends to psychologically, okay, mentally be a routine for us. Hence, when it is a routine, it will be uh, something that bores us. Okay? Uh, so, this shouldn't be um, the thing for our prayer. Okay? When we perform our prayer, we should ensure that we set our niyyah, our intention. Uh, why do we perform our prayer? The reason we perform our prayer is because we want to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one true God. Uh, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ And I did not create mankind and the jinn except to liya'budun, to worship me. Okay, uh, so the main purpose the main reason we are on this earth is to worship Allah and one way we profess or we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is through our prayers uh, which is why every time we want to begin our prayer uh, we have to set the intention right uh, we are doing this why because we want to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, and not just because oh it's a routine or it's a five times a day thing every afternoon I'll pray Zohor lah uh, come uh, dawn, I'll pray Maghrib. Uh, it, it doesn't, uh, it cannot be like that. Okay, every prayer you do, it has to be with the intention that um, you want to worship Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Okay, so that is the second do. You have to set your intention. Okay, and we suffice with these two do's lah. Okay, for our prayers. Number one, be in our best physical state. And secondly, to do it with the right intention. Now moving on to the don'ts in salah. Uh, so the don'ts in salah also there's two I would like to emphasize on. Number one would be not to procrastinate when we want to perform our salah. Uh, so for example, we take the example of uh, salah to zuhur. Uh, when is the azan? It's usually around one o'clock, right? Uh, then asar prayers would be around 4 o'clock. Uh, so you would say, ah, I don't have to perform my zuhur prayer at 1 lah. I can perform it at 2. I can perform it at 3. Uh, maybe before asar also, I can, just before asar, I can perform my zuhur prayer. Uh, that shouldn't be the attitude of a practicing Muslim. Uh, we should not procrastinate when we want to perform our prayer. Okay, and to cite a uh, hadith. Okay, narrated by Ibn Mas'ud radiyallahu anhu where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned uh, afdalul a'mal the best uh, of ibadah the best of deeds you can do as-salatu fi awwali waqtiha uh, is to perform prayer in its early time uh, so when the azan you hear the azan for zuhur uh, then you straight away do your zuhur prayer uh, that is considered afdalul a'mal uh, the best of deeds uh, so with this in mind what should we do practical tips uh, amongst it that we can um, implement in our daily lives um, is to plan our schedule according to um, according to our prayer times okay so for example you want to go for a jog uh, when do you want to go for a jog Instead of saying, oh, I want to go for a jog at 3 p.m. I want to go for a jog at 4 p.m. Instead of that, why not we change the mindset? We say, okay, after I have done my asar prayers, I will jog. Uh, in that way, you will constantly 
plan your schedule around your prayer times around your daily prayers uh, so you will make sure you perform your daily prayers first and then you do your other chores uh, hey, when should I prepare for uh, iftar uh, after my jog uh, when is your jog after my asar prayers uh, see uh, this is one uh, practical tip for us to uh, fight that procrastination uh, in performing our daily prayers okay uh, so that's the number one item with regards to uh, what we should not do uh, in our salah we should not procrastinate when we want to perform our salah okay now number two number two is we should not rush uh, we should not rush when we uh, perform our prayer uh, you see because um, when we perform our prayer um, sometimes we do it as fast as we can just to get over it uh, so this shouldn't be the case okay this uh, ties back to setting the intention uh, whenever we perform our prayer we have to remember the reason we are performing our prayer it, not because it's a routine but it's because we want to showcase our worship uh, our worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala okay which is why we shouldn't rush in prayer we should take it um as it is okay to be in a relaxed manner okay, and as we mentioned also amongst the arkan of salah is we have to maintain al-tumanina in our movements uh, what's tumanina to recap uh, tumanina is al-hudu to perform it in a relaxed manner with the movements uh, in between uh, e- uh, having a period equivalent to uh, the mentioning of subhanallah uh, so we perform our salah with its sunnah uh, that is how we don't rush in the salah okay sunnah doesn't mean it's sunnah we don't do uh, sunnah we are encouraged to do it uh, in that way we uh, perform the prayer in a relaxed manner uh, whenever we perform sujud we recite what is sunnah what is it subhana rabbiyal a'la wa bihamdi three times whenever we ruku' uh, what do we recite subhana rabbiyal a'zimi wa bihamdi three times hmm. Okay. When we sit uh, in between the two sujud, it's sunnah to recite Rabbi firli warhamni wajiburni warfa'ani warzuqni wahdini wa'afini wa'afu'anni okay. So in that manner, when we strive to perform the sunnah in our prayers, uh, we will perform it in a relaxed manner. And when we set the intention that we perform our prayers to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one and true God, uh, then... Um, we can consider it uh, to be the best version uh, of our prayers that we can present to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ok so that is with regards to the do's and don'ts in salah so just as a quick recap what we discuss and emphasize upon in today's episode uh, the do's for uh, this uh, particular topic okay, the do's in salah there's two items number one do be in your best state physically and secondly do set your intention right uh, then the don'ts in salah number one don't procrastinate okay, perform your prayers uh, uh, in its early time and then secondly don't rush when you perform your prayer okay we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his guidance and blessings and may our prayers uh, that we do, that we present to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be in its best version. InshaAllah, ameen, ya rabbal alamin. Thank you for tuning into this episode. Um, have a good uh, Ramadan ahead. Um, do continue to support uh, this program, like and share. Okay, and uh, so that many others may benefit, inshaAllah. Till next time, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.